I want us to take just one verse out of chapter 8. I don't want to skip it completely, but it kind of pulls everything together. Uh, chapter 8, verse 15 says, David reigned over all of Israel, doing what was just and right for all of his people. Now, surrounding that one little verse is a long list of accomplishments predominantly in the field of battle. David defeats a lot of people, and so by the time we get to chapter 9, we're in that time frame where David has pretty much laid the, the enemies to rest and is living a fairly constant existence in Jerusalem. So he's not out in the field as much anymore. He's got his, his home there in Jerusalem, and he's staying there uh, more of the time. Uh, he still has some more mop-up work to do in chapter 10. He'll have to go meet with the Ammonites and do some more. But basically, David is in a place of power. You remember in chapter 7, we saw where God promised him a house of his own. Right? I don't want you to build me a house. I want to build a house for you. You're going to have a forever kingdom. I'm going to raise up from your descendants a king that uh, will have a kingdom that will never cease to exist. So uh, eight is kind of a list of accomplishments following that decree. And then Second Samuel 9 is kind of a testimony to David's character. He was in a position at this point where he could be benevolent. And so he wants to make good on a promise that he made to Jonathan several years ago. If you remember, Jonathan said, I realize that I'm never going to be the king Realize that God's given you the kingdom. I have one request. Be good to my family when I'm gone. Right, so David is going to try to make good on that promise in chapter 9. Let's just read all of chapter 9 and then just notice a couple of things in particular. David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, I'm at your service. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I could show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both of his feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He is at the house of Machir, son of Amiel, in Lodabar. So King David had him brought from Lodabar from the house of Machir, son of Amiel. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down and paid him honor. David said, Are you Mephibosheth? And he said, I am at your service. Don't be afraid, David said to him. I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore you to uh, all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? The king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and he said to him, I've given, you, uh, I've given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him and bring in the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So Ziba said to the king, your servant will do whatever my lord the king commands his servant to do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were servants of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, because he always ate at the king's table, and he was lame in both feet. Now, we don't have time, we won't take time, but if you just had, if you needed a hobby, you could go back through that chapter and count how many times it said, Mephibosheth always ate at David's table. Right? You don't want to miss the point, right? The writer keeps telling us over and over again, Mephibosheth always ate at David's table. He lived in the city of Jerusalem so that he could eat at David's table. But while he's dining with the king, he has servants who are taking care of land that he now owns. Before, 
he was under the care of someone else that was just making sure he was all right. He refers to himself in the text as a dead dog. I'm worthless. I'm a nobody. I've got no uh, talent, no money, no nothing. And David says, well, that's who you used to be. But that's not who you are now. And so he gives him all of these things. So David was in a position to be benevolent. God had done a lot of good things for David. And he was sitting pretty. But it's a testimony to David's character when he is nice to a man that he doesn't really have to be. He does what he told Jonathan he would do, but Jonathan is dead, and Jonathan doesn't care. Saul is dead. Saul doesn't care. Who cares? David does. Right? David is a man of uh, great authority, great wealth, but also great character. Uh, when we were in the ethics class, one of the questions I would ask him is, how would you define the idea of character? And the definition they came up with was kind of a common one, and that is who you are when nobody's looking. Right? So David could have done anything David wanted to do. Uh, nobody was in charge of David but David, and he chose to do the right thing by Jonathan. And so, you know, all the heirs to the throne had been dispatched, except this guy. He's actually a grandson. If Jonathan had lived and become king, Mephibosheth would have been a prince. But instead, he was just living under somebody's care somewhere, being uh, just kind of in a corner, being cared for because he couldn't take care of himself. And so he leaves that situation and goes to live in David's palace. So now he's a wealthy man, he has standing in the kingdom, and he eats at the king's table. So here's a pop quiz. What building material was used to make the house where David and Mephibosheth had dinner? It was cedar, yeah. Uh, David was very, very proud of his cedar house, and he thought God wanted one just like it. We remember that God told him, I don't need you to build me anything. I've got everything that I need. I want to take care of you. So while God is taking care of David, David, who is a man of great character, decides that he will also take care of Mephibosheth. So we'll just leave it right there.